بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما انك انت العليم الحكيم اللهم امين وبعد We continue with Riyadh al-Salihin by Imam al-Nawwi rahimahullahu ta'ala wa nafa'an Allahu bi'alumihi fi al-dharaini ameen. Inshallah we'll be concluding the section on um, the mannerisms and the etiquettes of eating um, and that which pertains to you know, food and drink. And so the chapter, our first chapter for tonight is chapter 114. Imam Nawawi rahimahullah ta'ala, he titles it, Babu Bayani Jawazi Shurbi Qa'iman Wa Bayani Anna Al-Akmala Wal Afdal Al-Shurba Qa'idan. Here Imam Nawawi says, chapter on the permissibility of drinking while standing um, and the virtue to drink while uh, sitting, and that the preferred position is to drink while sitting. Um, you know, the ahkam al sharia before getting into this, uh, the, the Islamic rulings, there are two types. There are rulings that are ma'qulat al-ma'na. There are rulings that the meanings and the purposes of these ahkam we can understand. It's clear. What, what does, why did this law, why was this hukum uh, commanded to us in this deen? These are the reasons, these are the benefits, all right? These are the purposes. And there are other ahkam that are not ma'qulat al-ma'na, that we don't understand the reasoning behind them, but we simply perform them because that is Allah's command. Um, and so, for example, the number of salawat, five prayers a day, fajr is two, maghrib is three, dhuhr is four, asr is four, isha is four, morning prayer, afternoon prayer, asr prayer, all the prayer times around the timing of the sun. There isn't, there isn't some reasoning that we can deduce for why the, the prayer times are... Um, you know, are according to the position of the sun and why there's this number of raka'at. We don't know why. We simply have been told, it has been demonstrated to us by the Messenger of Allah, alayhi salatu wasalam, that this is how you worship Allah, this is how you perform the salah, these are the times of the salah, perform them. Um, amma, many other ahkam, such as, for example, drinking while standing, why did Sharia prohibit that? Or we said yesterday, breathing into a container or blowing into a container of a, 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 a vessel, be it a you know a drink, uh, or be it a bowl of soup or a plate of food, um, that's prohibited. And we said the reason behind that prohibition is a few. One is that it's uh, it's disturbing to the other people if they're drinking with you, right? And so it, there's a disturbance because traditionally people shared plates, and so when you blow into a food and other people are eating with you. It's disturbing, or your people shared cups. If you blow into a cup that other people are sharing with you, it's disturbing. That was the primary reason why it was prohibited or you know forbidden to drink, uh, to, from, to blow into a vessel or to breathe into it. Um, modern with modern science, we found that also when we breathe, we, we actually uh, uh, you know there, that's bacteria that we breathe out, and so from a hygiene perspective as well. It's not good even for our own selves, even if it's our own, our own breath. So there's wisdoms that are apparent that we can understand, right? So same with here, with the you know, prohibition of drinking while standing, there's a wisdom, right? Who's ever tried to drink water while, while, while standing or walking? It's a little bit harder, and, and, and there's a possibility of you choking on that water increases, right? And so there's that aspect, the health benefit, that when you are standing or when you are moving while drinking, it isn't healthy. It isn't, it isn't, it isn't the best method of drinking. And so for your own health, because Sharia came to preserve 
the well-being of human beings, right? The Sharia, the Deen of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, came to preserve people's health and people's well-being, um, uh, their physical health as well as their spiritual well-being, um, and so drinking while standing is not healthy, right? They tell you to sit. Why? Because it's better. Also, customarily, it's it's found eating and drinking. Uh, and, and standing and, and in front of people is, is tends to be uh, inappropriate in most cultures, in most societies, um, and, and, and generally makes people uncomfortable, right? You, you, you see somebody just standing and eating in the middle of, of, of a group of people, or, or it, it's, especially with eating. With drinking, it's, less, it's not as, as, as awkward or, uh, in, in cultures. And so there's also a customary aspect to it. Traditionally, the scholars, it was customarily inappropriate for them to eat or drink even in public, let alone drinking while standing. Uh, it was, and because that was what was expected, it was inappropriate for a scholar to walk around with his head uncovered, because that, were, that was kind of the norm of the society. And so, in many Muslim societies, it's still common. And so, so a society, Islam, part of Islam is you also maintain the norms of a people. We're not supposed to be. Um, we're not supposed to go against the norms and the cultures of our societies. We're actually supposed to go along with them, unless they are contradicting the deen, right? And so, uh, 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 and this is something that a lot of Muslims are surprised by. Like, you no, know, you're supposed to actually fit in with them. You, you're supposed to dress like your people, behave like your people, talk like your people. You're supposed to be a, a, just just like them. You don't want to stand out from them. You only want to stand out from your people when it's regarding matters of deen that we're supposed to have a clear position on. Or there's some type of benefit in da'wah or something of that sort. So these are some, some of the ahkam and some of the kind of, um, uh, uh, kind of larger, larger rulings behind the ahkam of sharia. So there's some hikam. The reason I'm sharing this is to show us that the, the prohibition on drinking while standing, there's some wisdoms behind it. There's some reasoning behind it that we're able to understand. Now, the harms of drinking while standing aren't severe enough to make it haram. It's not severe enough to make it haram, so therefore, what's the ruling? Makruh. When the harm is extreme, then the ruling becomes haram. Right? That's another principle you can use. Well, there are two levels of prohibition, right? There are you know, things that are forbidden, that are haram and sinful. And they are they're also levels. They're not all equal. There are major sins, minor sins. And then there are prohibitions that are not, we're not supposed to do it. They're not good for us. But if we did it, there's no sin. Because the harm of it isn't extreme enough that Allah would make a haram upon us. And so that's the, that's the you know, that's one here. Another thing that's important to, 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 to reflect on is that when we talk about you know, halal and haram and what's permissible and not permissible, we're talking about the legalities of rulings. Yes, brother, you had a comment, question? Uh, can something be makruh for somebody, but if it's hurting the other person, can, can it become haram for them? Yes, it, it, it can. So this is something that is makruh, but it's causing harm to other people? Is that, is that the question? Yeah, so if one person has, an, has a health issue that comes up when they're standing and drinking, for example. Yes. Generally, no one has a health issue. But if that person has a health issue, is it haram for them? Yes. Okay. So the brother asks, can something that is generally makruh become haram for someone? I'll add that, yes, yes. Above this, or you know, beyond this, something that is permissible can become haram for someone. For example, let's say, Allergies, right? Somebody ha is allergic to eggs or peanuts. And they know it's, they're allergic to it and it causes harm to them. It is haram for them. Beyond the health, right? Beyond the health reason, if they were to be like, well, I don't care, I'm just going to eat it and, and deal with it. It's actually haram to cause yourself significant harm. If it's minor, trivial harm, like, you know, overeating, it's not good for you, but it's not you know, maybe over a long period of time, but it's not, a, you know, it's not something that is significantly, like, okay, it's haram, but it's, ha it's makruh. But if it's something is seriously harming you, then even if it's permissible, generally, it can be haram in your case. And so, uh, so that applies to makruh as well. If somebody's allergic to honey, we're supposed to drink honey, and honey is beneficial, and maybe they have an allergy to it, then it's haram in their case to drink that. 
Our scholars, they say that um, it is haram to harm the body uh, with significant harm. We're not talking about minor harm because, you know, there's always, we're always doing some level of harm to ourselves with the bad lifestyles that we have, right? You overeat, maybe you eat too much hot sp spices or, you know, things like that, heartburn. Like, you know, you shouldn't, right? But there's a, there's a small, right, a smaller portion, you know, or some small amount of harm being done. But it isn't, it isn't significant enough to make a haram. But when something is now is going to cause a, re, a serious allergic reaction or, or cause you some serious health issues, then now at this point, this thing becomes haram upon that person. Um, so yes, that, the answer to your question is yes. Um, I wanted to comment, one additional comment, is that, so we're talking about rulings and permissibilities, right? It's important to know to have fiqh. Because the deen, this deen, isn't, uh, 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 you know, it requires wisdom. And that's what the Prophet ﷺ, he said, if Allah wants good for a person, he grants them understanding of, of the deen. Because without understanding of the deen, you, you can either become an overzealous person who's extreme, or you become a careless person who rejects the boundaries and the commands of Allah. Without fiqh, you don't know how to conduct yourself with the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So either you become very extreme and you cause a lot of harm with the claim of deen. A deen, 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 deen. And you're making people's lives very difficult. Unnecessarily. You're making people's lives difficult. Or you're just like, Allah ghafur rahim, brother. It's okay. Just do whatever you want. It's okay. Don't worry about it. Just do. Then at that point, what are you doing? You're just going to transgress. You're going to do haram because you're just like, Allah ghafur rahim. Allah doesn't burden us all more than it can bear. I understand, but you have to have understanding for to justify your behavior. And if you know this is not justifiable, then you have to make sure you make tawbah and stay within the boundaries that Allah has set for you. Right? So having fiqh of the deen is absolutely critical. And it's a sign of khair for a person. If a person has fiqh, they, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, has blessed them. And yesterday we gave some examples of, right, of fiqh, of knowing when to prioritize. Right? The Prophet ﷺ, he demonstrated, he told us, uh, for example, to drink while sitting. But he demonstrated drinking while, eat, while standing to show us that you should do this, but there might be circumstances where you just don't or you can't. Or, or, or for whatever reason, you don't have the, the, the you, don't, you, you just don't have the energy or you're, not, you, or you're just busy and you, you're just trying to drink very quickly and go about your business. And so, or you're just distracted and your mind isn't present, right? It's mentally, you're just not mentally there. So you know that this is permissible. You're not, you don't feel a sense of guilt about it, right? So having that fiqh is important, right? And so that you know. Now, the, on the other end of this, or, or you know, another a, a aspect of this that we need to reflect on is that the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, we don't follow it just because, you know, uh, the hukum, or we shouldn't minimize the commands of the Prophet ﷺ because it's not wajib. Oh, it's a sunnah, brother. Why are you making a big deal of it? No, it's the command of my beloved, alayhi salatu wasalam. And I want to adhere to it. Right? That should be. If you love someone, you want to follow their example. You want to be like them. You want to you know, adopt their way of life. You want to adopt their character. You want to adopt their habits. You want to talk like them, walk like them, behave like them, drink like them, eat like them, sleep like them. Because you want to be like this person. They're, they're your idol. They're, they're, they're the person you look up to. They're your beloved, alayhi salatu wasalam. So the sunnah, we shouldn't ever minimize it, thinking, oh, this is just sunnah. It's not a big deal. This is not wajib or this is not haram. It's not a big deal. It isn't, yes, from a fiqh perspective, yes, it's not, a, it's, not a, it's not a primary, right? Like, it's not a major ruling. It's more of the minor rulings, yes. But when it comes to everything pertaining to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it's a big deal. See? Everything about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is a big deal. How he drank is a big deal. How he slept is a big deal. Because why? That is the example of Allah's Messenger, Alayhi Wasallam. And we, want to lo we love him with, all our, with more than our own lives. We love him more than we love our own selves. So if that is our love, we have to express that love. And that we express that love by trying to be like the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam, in all the aspects of our life. Right? And so that is why our ulama, they didn't, you know, they, they preserved these ahadiths. Somebody would think, why are there so many ahadiths just about how to drink? What kind of religion 
talks about drinking in a whole chapter of her book. Right? Just drinking to stand or drinking sitting. We're like, well, you don't understand the love we have for God's messenger. Right? It's not just about social justice. It's not just about you know, preserving people's lives or worship and devotion. It's about every aspect of life. It's about beautifying our lives with the beautiful example of Allah's Messenger. Right? So it's also important that we embody this, this, this love. Right? Along with the fiqh, there has to be a balance of love. Um, and so, inshallah ta'ala... Uh, those are two things that I just wanted to bring our attention to as we start to read uh, this chapter, uh, these chapters. Because again, these, these issues are very, um, you know, minor issues or, or you know, and, and so somebody might not make a big deal of it. So we need to understand it is a big deal because it's pertaining to Allah's Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The first, uh, so Imam Nawi, he narrates, he says, the first hadith in this chapter is the hadith of Kepsha. Right, she is the sister of uh, Hassan ibn Thabit, Kepsha ibn Thabit. We mentioned last night that the Prophet ﷺ visited her, and when he came, he drank from a uh, a, a, a vessel, a uh, skin, uh, a kind of right, a water vessel made of uh, animal skin, and and he Alaihissalam drank it while standing, and he and he drank from the vessel directly, uh, and so this showed that drinking while standing is permissible. Drinking while standing is permissible. The following hadith narrated by Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu ma qala saqaytu al-nabiyya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam min zamzam fa shariba wa huwa qa'im muttafaqun alayhi Ibn Abbas narrates that he uh, uh, radiallahu anhu ma that he provided drink of zamzam to the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Prophet sallam drank the zamzam while standing he didn't sit right? he didn't sit and it could be due to traffic it's busy or, 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 or the heat or fatigue. And so the Prophet ﷺ just drank the zamzam while he was standing. The next hadith is narrated by An Nazal ibn Sabrata radiallahu anhu qala Ata Aliyun radiallahu anhu bab al rahbati fa shariba qa'iman wa qala inni raaytu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam fa'ala kama raaytu muni fa'altu. It's narrated by an Nazal ibn Samra, Sabra, radiallahu anhu. He said that Ali, radiallahu anhu, came to the Bab of Rahbah. And, so, and then he drank standing. He drank standing at this gate. And, um, and then Ali said, I saw the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, do as you see me doing today. So meaning, I saw the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi drinking while standing. That's why I'm also drinking while standing. The following hadith narrated by Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu ma qala kunna na'kulu ala ahdi rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa nahnu namshi wa nashrabu wa nahnu qiyam rawahu tirmidhi wa qala hadithun hasanu sahih Ibn Umar narrates radiallahu anhu ma he says that we used to during the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam drink while we would walk eat while we would walk namshi na'kulu wa nahnu ah uh, he says, "Nakulu ala ahd Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam wa namshi." We would eat while we would walk, um, and so this again shows the permissibility. What you can eat while walking, right? It isn't haram. It's permissible. It's not even makruh. The sunnah is to to sit, but if you don't do it, there's no sin. It's fine. Wa nashrabu wa nahnu qiyam, and we would drink while standing. And this narrated by Tirmidhi, it's Hassan Sahih Hadith. It's also narrated by uh, uh, Amr ibn Shu'ayb an Abihi an Jaddihi radiallahu anhu. Amr ibn Shu'ayb narrates from his father who narrates from his grandfather uh, radiallahu anhu. Qala ra'aytu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yashrabu qa'iman wa qa'idan. He said that I saw the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam drink while sitting, while standing and while sitting. The following hadith is narrated by Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu an al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam أنه نهى أن يشرب الرجل قائما قال قتاده فقلنا لأنس فالأكل قال ذلك الشر أو أخبث رواه مسلم. So he said that in this hadith, Anas رضي الله عنه said that the the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام forbade a man from drinking while standing. نهى أن يشرب الرجل قائما. That a man drinks while standing. Prophet forbade, forbade that. He, Qatada asked Anas, one of the tabi'in. He asked, uh, or one of the students of Sayyidina Anas. He said, Fal akl, how about eating while standing? Sayyidina Anas said, Dalika ashar. That's even worse. 
or akhbath, that's even more evil, or, 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 or you know. And so um, it shows that to drink while standing, to, to drink while, eat, to eat while standing is worse than to eat while, to, while, well, to, to drink while standing. And so we should avoid eating while standing, for sure. And then second is avoid drinking while standing. And then if we did it, alhamdulillah, it's permissible, no, no blame. And in another narration, the Prophet um, uh, 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 criticized or rebuked the Prophet kind of criticized or rebuked those who would drink while standing. Uh, and so the Prophet would engage Sahaba. He would tell them, do not do that. So he would teach them to not, do, to not make this a habit. Right? So the Sunnah is, don't make it a habit. To always drink while standing. Teach yourself to sit. But if you, you know, drink standing occasionally, labas. That was kind of the, the, the Prophet ﷺ demonstrated to the companions. The following hadith narrated by Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu qala qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam la yashraban ahadukum ahadum minkum qa'ima faman nasiya fal yastaqi. It's narrated by Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu. He said that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لا يشربن أحد منكم قائما. No person among you should ever drink while standing. فمن نسي فليستق. And whoever forgets, if you drink while standing and you forget, let him vomit. Vomit what you were drinking. So a person might wonder why. You know, how? What's the reasoning for that? And this appears that this was in the beginning. The Prophet ﷺ made this made an emphasis that you don't drink standing at all. And then later on, the ruling was eased for the Muslim. That he وسلم, showed that there's rukhsa. And we see that that has happened in Sharia, right? The ahkam change. Sometimes they go from being hard to easy. And sometimes they go from being easy to hard. What's an example of something going from easy to hard? The prohibition of khamr. Yeah. Right? You can drink. Don't drink while in prayer. And then don't drink at all, don't come to Salah intoxicated, right? And then don't drink at all, stay away from it completely, right? So it went from ease to hard. It went from something that was allowed to something that was completely haram, major sin. And then something that went from hard to easy was don't drink. If you drink while standing and you forget, you have to vomit and then, and then you know, drink again. So it was serious, and then the ahkam became easier, became easier later. So the ahkam would go both ways. And so again, this requires fiqh. Because if somebody reads the hadith, they're like, khalas brother, if you drink while standing, you have to vomit. No, there's, they have to have fiqh of the hadith. Well, so they and then it changed. Yeah, because here he said you have to vomit. But that was early in Islam. Later on, it wasn't like that. And the Prophet demonstrated that. He would drink himself while standing to show that the hukum had changed, that it's, it's allowed, it's not haram anymore. Does that, does that make sense? Or that, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean it was haram, but the, the hukum wasn't as, 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 as serious as it was in the beginning. All right, and so the next chapter, Imam Nawi rahimahullah, he says, باب استحباب كون ساق القوم آخرهم شربا. He says that chapter on the recommendation or or the استحباب um, for the person um, serving the people uh, to be the last person to drink. So if you're the one serving the people, you should be the last person to drink, the last person to eat. Um, generally, we said uh, during Sahaba time, there would be one, you know, whoever the host was would be providing the water, provided to the first person, and then that person would rotate it to the right. And so that person who's serving, as he drinks after everybody drinks. Right? And this we can also apply it today. If you have guests, serve your guests, make sure everybody has a dish, has a drink, has whatever they need, and then afterwards you make yourself a plate. Right? So you put, you put your guests ahead of yourself. Right, whenever there's an occasion, right, because the women are generally preparing the food, so they would eat after the men, they serve the men, right, to, uh, out of, because they're the ones providing the food, so this is a, just, this is a sign of generosity, it's a sign of karam, a sign of, 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 of khuluk, right, that, 
you always put your, your guests ahead of you. And so this was some, something that you even saw, you know, with the women who, when they would prepare the food. Um, uh, uh, and so it's, it, this hadith, there's only one hadith in this chapter. It's narrated by Abi Qatada radiallahu anhu. And the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Saqi al-qawmi akhiruhum. The Prophet ﷺ said that the one um, that serves the community with drinking water should be the last one who drinks. Rawahu Tirmidhi wa qala hadithan hasan wa sahih. The following chapter, he, Imam al-Nawi titles it, Babu Jawaz al-Shurbi min jami' al-awani al-tahira ghayr al-zahabi wal-fiddati wa jawaz al-qar' wa huwa al-shurb bil-fami min al-nahri wa ghayrihi بغير إناء ولا يد وتحريم استعمال إناء الذهب والفضة في الشرب والأكل والطهارة وصائر وجوه الاستعمال. So here Imam Nawawi رحمه الله says a bab on the permissibility of drinking from any pure container, any pure vessel, uh, except gold and silver. So we can eat and drink from any vessel except vessels that are made of gold and silver. Um, uh, and this is something that, you know, the, the, the kings would do, you know, traditionally, because it was a sign of wealth, right? You would have gold vessels, gold cups, and things of that sort. Um, and, and so um, this was forbidden in the Sharia, that drinking from gold cups or silver, silverware, also still common in, in societies, um, that they would, you know, if you had wealth, you would buy, your, your, your utensils would be made of silver. And that's haram, to drink from using cups or, or that are made of silver, or plates that are made of silver, or any type of really, uh, you, you know, uh, uh, container or vessel that is made of silver is haram. We can't use it. Um, and, and, and so this only applies to gold and silver. It doesn't apply to other expensive um, you know, elements. Um, so if a person had, I don't know, some type of expensive, you know, material that they made their utensils out of or something out of extravagance, it isn't haram. It's makruh. A lot of our scholars say it's makruh, but it's in haram. It isn't sinful. But gold and silver is sinful. It's prohibited. And then he also says, rahimahullah, um, and the permissibility, al-jawaz al kar the kara, who is, he says, is shurb bil fami min al nahri wa ghayrihi bi ghayri ina. He says, it's to drink, uh, wala yad. Kara is to drink from um, uh, a river uh, without any vessel. Like to just kind of dip your face in and then you sip from, from the, from the it's, it's just halal, it's permissible. It's, it's, there's no sin if a person, or there's no karaha if a person did that. Uh, they, if you use, a lot of people use their hand, even if they don't, it's okay. Even if they don't use their hand, it's okay. But this is from like something like a river or you know something of that sort, a spring, or, or at least you know in a form where you're drinking from it. But if it's a vessel that other people are drinking from, you're not supposed to, because you're sharing it, and you can't do that when you're sharing the vessel with other people, um, or when you're pouring from that vessel for other people. When you're pouring, you can't do that. Um, so does that does that make is that clear on the ruling right? So it's allowed to drink from the from a river directly, um, a large body of water, uh, without using any vessel or without even using the hand. Um, and so, and we mentioned that regarding gold and silver, all utensils, drinking, eating, wudu, carry water, anything, is not allowed. We don't use gold and silver vessels, utensils at all. Um, other than that, it's allowed. Um, it's makruh for other expensive, um, you know, uh, material that they might be made of, but not haram. Uh, the first hadith in the chapter is narrated by Anas radiallahu anhu qala, حَضَرَتِ الصَّلَاةُ فَقَامَ مَنْ كَانَ قَرِيبُ الدَّارِ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهِ وَبَقِيَ قَوْمٌ فَأَتَى رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمَ بِمَخْضَبٍ uh, مِنْ حِجَارَةِ فَصَغْوَرَ الْمِخْضَبُ أن يبسط فيه كفة فتوضأ القوم كلهم قالوا كم كنتم قال قال ثمانين وزيادة متفق عليه هذا رواية البخاري. It's not really by saying Anas رضي الله عنه that حضرت الصلاة that the prayer time had entered. 
فَقَامَ مَنْ كَانَ قَرِيبُ الدَّارِ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهِ The people that were near their homes, they went home to make wudu for salah. وَبَقِيَ قَوْمٌ There were a large group of people that were still there. There must have been some type of gathering. And there was a large group of people that were still there. And it was time for salah and they had to make wudu. But they don't have anywhere to go to, or they don't have access to water. وَبَقِيَ قَوْمٌ فَأَتَى رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ بِمَخْضَبٍ مِنْ حِجَارَةٍ He said that, uh, that the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام um, a stone trough with water in it was brought to the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم. Like, it was some type of bowl, some type of vest container uh, made of uh, uh, stone. Yeah. Right, made of clay, made of stone. Clay. Yeah, from clay. And, and so it was brought to the Prophet It's a small, it's a small, he says that um, فَصَغُرَ الْمِقْضَبِ That um, it was too small for him to spread, his, to spread his hand inside it. The bowl, this vessel that was brought, was so small that the Prophet could not completely open his hand inside the vessel. Meaning it was really small. It's a very small vessel, right? He, he barely is able to just fit his hand in there. Um, and so this vessel was brought, or, you know, this, this, this bowl uh, made, of st- uh, made of stone. And the Prophet puts his hand in there. And, and there's water in there. And he puts his hand inside the water, alayhi salatu wasalam. And it was too small, so the Prophet couldn't open his hand. It just stayed kind of closed. But it sufficed for performing the ablution of the whole hand. And so he said, فَتَوَضَّعَ الْقَوْمُ uh, he said that the entire people that were there made wudu from it. And so this is one of the miracles of Rasulullah that no other Nabi performed. Other Anbiya, they would create water from the earth. Musa alayhi salam, he struck the rock and there were 12 springs. Ayyub alayhi salam, he struck the earth and there was a spring that came out. Rasulullah water would come out from his hands. That was unique to him. On more than one occasion, he would, create, would put his hand in a vessel and, and the water would keep increasing. It wouldn't end. And this was done numerous times. One of the, the miracles of the Prophet, the Prophet he would put his hand in a, in, in a vessel and the water would come. Now the Prophet, he didn't keep his hand out in the vessel. The water wouldn't pour. To keep the, hik, the qudra of Allah covered. See, this our dunya we don't see the qudra of Allah without sabab. Allah has made that his qudra is covered by asbab. It's covered by causes. Right? But you drink medicine, Allah gave you shifa. But he put that shifa, he, he covered it in a medicine. That's how the whole dunya is. Right? All of, the qudra, all of this is the qudra of Allah. Right? Nothing has power of itself. All of it is Allah's power that's making all of this khala'iq and everything living and existing and moving is by Allah's power subhanahu wa ta'ala. But he's made a hijab. There's a hijab, there's a cover. And so these, the cover is asbab. And there's a test. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to what? Put our trust in Allah and not put our trust in asbab. Don't put your trust in the medicine. Don't put your trust in the doctor. Put your trust in Allah. Seek the medicine. Seek the doctor. Seek the heart, you know, do your, seek the means you need, but you don't put your heart and your tawakkul and your hope and your faith in those objects, right? This is the test of the dunya, right? That even when you don't have money, you put your tawakkul in Allah. It's not the money or the job that's going to give you your wealth, although that is the sabab, right? That is the sabab. The, it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who provides it. In Allah, and so the Prophet ﷺ, even when he performed miracles, he made sure that it was done with some sabab. It was hidden under some sabab. It wasn't immediate. Occasionally things were, maybe the splitting of the moon. But in, in, when it came to the occasion of the you know, uh, um, increase of water or increase of milk the, or increase of food, this also would happen with food. The Prophet ﷺ, um, would not uh, uh, display it, but he would hide it. And so his hand was in the water, and the water would keep coming. And so, and so Sayyidina Anas was questioned, 
uh, you know, he, he was questioned, Kam kuntum? How many people were there? How many were you? He says, Qala thamanina wa ziyada. We were 80 or more. So he estimates that, you know, there were a large group of people. So he, his estimation was that there were roughly 80, you know, plus people. That, that's how many people made wudu from that little bowl. Right? A little bowl uh, that the hand of the Prophet ﷺ was placed in. وفي رواية لمسلم أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم دعا بإناء من ماء فأتى بقدح رحراح فيه شيء من ماء فوضع أصابعه فيه قال أنس فجعلت أنظر إلى الماء ينبع من بين أصابعه فحرست من توضع فحرست من توضع ما بين السبعين إلى الثمانين. so in another in the other version narrated by Muslim uh, Sayyidina Anas, he says that then the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi he asked for a vessel of water to be brought to him and he was brought with a qadah rahrah and fihi shay'un min ma. A vessel made uh, uh, called rahrah and I believe that um, rahrah is something made of um, uh, uh, metal, some type of metal, let me see. A broad utensil, that's how they translated it. No, I'm not metal. Astaghfirullah. This one, this the rah uh, rah is is a is a is a is a is a vessel that is wide but not deep. So it's kind of a wide bowl, but not. It doesn't go deep, right? So it's very flat. It's a flat but wide bowl. And so the put his hand in it, and people were making wudu from it. Uh, and then, and then he said, I will. And I said, Fajal to. فَوَضَعَ أَصَابِعَهُ في The Prophet ﷺ put his fingers inside the, inside the, you know, the, the, the vessel. Um, and he said, فَجَعَلْتُ أَنْظُرُ إِلَى الْمَاءِ يَنْبُعُ مِنْ بَيْنِ أَصَابِعِهِ I saw the water coming out from between his fingers. So he said, I saw it. So the Anas was the servant of the Prophet ﷺ, so he was close. So he saw the water and where it was coming from. رضي الله تعالى عنه. فحرست من توضع ما بين سبعين إلى ثمانين. He said I counted the people that were making wudu to be between uh, seventy to eighty people. Uh, it's never about Abdullah ibn Zayd رضي الله عنه قال أتا أتانا النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فأخرجنا له ماء في تور من سفر فتوضع. He said that uh, it's never about Abdullah ibn Zayd radiallahu anhu qala ata'ana al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he says Abdullah ibn Zayd said that the, Muslim, the Prophet alayhi wa sallam had visited us or had come to us we brought him water in a, bra in a brass uh, vessel so this is made of brass right so some type of you know uh, metal uh, material and he performed his wudu and so this shows that the Prophet sallallahu made wudu from a vessel made of stone and he also made wudu from a vessel made of brass. Uh, it's not really on Jabir in Iqal Imam Nawi that a sufr bi dhamm al-saad wa yajuzu kasruha al-sifr wa huwa al-nuhas wa al-tawr kal qadah wa huwa bitta'i al-muthannah min fawq. On Jabir radiallahu anhu anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam dakhla ala rajul min al-ansar. Jabir narrates that uh, a man from the ansar, uh, that, no, that the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam entered the home of a man from the Ansar. He was visiting one of the Ansar. He said that Prophet Sunnah was to visit Sahaba. He would visit everybody. The men, the women, the Muhajirun, the Ansar, the elders, the children. The Prophet engaged with the, with the community all the time uh, and regularly and, and dealt with people with a sense of kindness and compassion. Uh, and, and there was a companion with the Prophet فقام رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم in, uh, uh, sorry, he said, فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وسلم, That the Prophet, uh, Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم has said, عند ما إن, uh, عندك ماء بات هذه الليلة في شنة وإلا, كر, وإلا كرعنا. He said that the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said to this Ansari, Do, uh, do you have water um, that has remained with you um, عندك ماء باتت هذه الليلة? Um, I'm looking at the translation. Yeah, he said, if you have some water left this night in a canteen. So do you have the Prophet asked him, do you have some water left this night in a canteen? Uh, or, you know, he says, fi, fi, uh, shanna. Uh, and, or he said, otherwise we, will, we shall sip from a stream. 
I mean, if you don't have any water, because to get water, there's no faucet, right? So to get water, you have to get it from the well, and then you store it. So the Prophet asked, do you have any leftover water from the previous day? Okay, if you don't have it, then we're going to go and we're going to drink from the stream of water, right? From I think you need cold water. Cold. It could be cold water, but he, the Prophet asked if you had any water. Do you have any leftover water from, this, from last night? No. Did they mention cold water in there? Cold water. Okay, that's possible. But the Prophet, he said, He said, do you have water that you have with you from last night? Because bata means to, something to stay overnight. Um, that is with you tonight. You know, that's left over. And so the Prophet said, he, he said, otherwise we'll drink. So again, he said, Ashan is al qarba it's, it's a type of, of, a, of a, a skin. So he said, do you have any water left in the, in the skin? Or they said canteen in a type of skin? Qarba? Okay. Animal skin, right? Yep, yep. Yeah, because they would use animal skin, right? And, and they would, um, what do you call it? Tan it, right? You take the animal skin, you tan it, you clean it up, and then stitch it and secure it, and then you would use it. Yeah. Yeah. To store the water. To store the water, yeah. Yeah, it's an ancient practice that even the Arab used to do. Yeah. Yeah. And it keeps the, the water cold. Yeah, it keeps the water cold. It doesn't heat up, yes. Uh, all right, so, so we have two final hadith, and then inshallah, we're done with the chapter. Uh, the two, uh, the, the second to last hadith is narrated by Hudayfata radiallahu anhu. Inna nabiya sallallahu qala inna nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam nahana an al hariri wa dibaj wa shurbi. في آنية الذهب والفضة وقال هي لهم في الدنيا ولكم في الآخرة حذيفة رضي الله تعالى عنه narrates that the Nabi عليه الصلاة والسلام forbade, prohibited us to wear silk or brocade um, it's a type of um, I would want to check the debadge and what that refers to how do they translate it in your book? yeah so to wear silk or brocade uh, the badge, it, it, from what I remember, it's a, it's a clothing with stitching of gold and, or, 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 or li silver linings or golden, uh, uh, you know, stitches. Um, that's what I recall a debadge is, but inshallah, I'll try to check. Um, maybe somebody can check for us, uh, inshallah ta'ala, or we can check afterwards. Oh, yeah. And then he also forbade to drink with golden or silver utensils. So the Prophet forbade that a person drink with gold or silver utensils. And he said, these are for them in this dunya. Here alone fi dunya, meaning they can, you know, the kuffar, they're going to drink from this because they don't follow halal and haram. So this is for them. These are their pleasures of the dunya. And they are for you in the hereafter. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared this for you in the hereafter. In the final hadith narrated by Ummu Salama, radiallahu anha, anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qal, الذي يشرب في آنية الفضة إنما يجرجر في بطنه نار جهنم. The Messenger of Allah صلى said, whoever drinks, the one who drinks from a vessel of silver is drinking or um, carrying, how does he say it here? He draws the fire of the hell into his stomach. So to drink it from the silver, is to bring the adab of nar to your, to your stomach. Meaning that what you are drinking is the reason that a person will be punished in the hellfire. Um, it could also be uh, a literal that in the akhirah, the one who drinks from silver vessels, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish them with a torment of internal flames that, that they will be burning from the inside. So the prohibition is serious. It's, it isn't a minor sin. It is a major sin to drink from silver because of the israf, right? People are starving and you're over here wasting money on silver utensils, right? Yeah. It's, it's a type of israf, huh? You say over here the people using the gold over here, drink it? Yeah. Because the day of judgment they have. This adab, yes, yeah. correct. Well, if you rewire it in the Muslim, إِنَّ الَّذِي يَأْكُلُ وَيَشْرَبُ فِي آنِيَةِ الْفِضَّةِ وَالذَّهَبِ in our narration by Muslim, who are the one who drinks from the f containers of gold or silver. So, inshallah, I mean, alhamdulillah, I don't think, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, uh, any of us here are using silver utensils or gold utensils or anything of that sort. 
Uh, but this is something we, you know, th those who are financially in a place where sometimes they might want to exp buy more expensive things, they have to be careful, right? That that, that they don't spend on gold and silver, um, and 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 you know they don't use those um, uh, uh, anything made of those two uh, material. وفي رواية له من شرب في إناء من ذهب وفضة فإنما يجرجر في بطنه نار من جهنم. And so just another version says whoever drinks in a container from a container of gold or silver that they uh, carry, uh, uh, they bring to their stomach um, into you know a fire from the hell, from Jahannam. ونعوذ بالله من ذلك. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to, to teach us what is beneficial and to benefit us by what he has taught us and to increase us in knowledge always. He is al-alim al-hakim. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala al-nabi. Ya ayyuhu al-ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Wa barik Allahumma ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ala Sayyidina Muhammad. كما صليت وباركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم اللهم فقهنا في الدين وعلمنا التأويل وجعلنا من عبادك الصالحين واغفر اللهم لنا ولوالدينا ولمشايخنا في الدين وللمسلمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه الحمد لله رب العالمين جزاكم الله خير بارك الله فيك